So, hello, my name is Sam Harlow, um, and I am the UNCG Online Learning Librarian as well as the Kinesiology and Public Health Librarian for UNCG University Libraries. So, um, we all came up with this idea to create a series of webinars on research and applications. I think this is the 10th webinar in the series, and welcome. In this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG library resources and research tools. <coughs> um, they are 30-minute webinars and are recorded um, in WebEx, where we are now, and placed on the library webpage through YouTube, where they will be closed captions and um, won't have you know, any data available. So I'm going to throw this in the chat um, where they will live. Sam, I think you're muted. Hey, how yeah. much? Is, okay, sorry. I think I accidentally muted myself when yep. I put this dead in. Okay, Perfect. so I'm going to cover some logistical things about how this webinar is going to run. Um, please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red, but then feel free to turn your audio back on by clicking the audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with presenters. If you don't have a microphone or it's not working, you can just participate in chat and I'll monitor it throughout the webinar. Um, so if you have questions throughout the webinar, put it in chat and I'll track them while um, Rachel presents. So if there are technical issues, you can call me. Um, I'm going to put my number and my email in the chat, um, whatever you prefer, if you're having any issues, just to kind of not interrupt the flow. There's my number. And then here's my email address. Okay, so do you have any questions before I introduce Rachel? Okay. So this is Rachel. She is going to present on researching and finding newspapers at UNCG libraries. So Rachel, I'm going to mute myself and you can begin. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm Rachel Sanders. I'm the first year instruction and social sciences librarian here at UNCG. Um, and I'm just going to give a brief overview, some background things about newspapers and, and using them in research that I think are interesting. Um, and then I'll actually do a couple demos and show how to use several of our databases here. Um, because newspapers are something that uh, you can search in a similar way, uh, like you can other uh, resources, but there are some nuances to some of the databases. So um, if you have questions, please feel free to pass those on in the chat. Um, so just a quick introduction, like why newspapers? I think that we hear a lot about books and scholarly articles, especially in a college environment. Um, but thinking about why newspapers specifically can be helpful for research, I think that a lot of people in humanities and business disciplines use them on a pretty regular basis. Um, I was a history major, and we used historical newspapers all the time for um, you know, learning about primary sources and primary source analysis. Um, they're very helpful for uh, that sort of education. But I also think that a lot of other disciplines could really take advantage of them more. Um, they're a very good sort of uh, look into what the, the general public is being told and the general conversation around certain topics is at the moment. So that could be historical study, but that could also be really useful for, um, you know, just modern day and things that are happening right now. And you'll see what I mean a little bit more um, later on. The way that things are placed in newspapers, sort of front page views, we'll see some in a little bit, um, can be really interesting and insightful in terms of what is most important to a particular region. So we have uh, lots and lots of newspapers here, both in print and online. So it's a nice um, it's nice when you can look at them online because that gives you some flexibility in terms of format. You can zoom in on some of them, search, um, and you can access it from a variety of locations. But also, you know, we have large print collections and microfiche collections as well if that interests you. So I'll talk a little bit about that. So deciding when to use newspapers um, <clears throat> can be a little bit tricky. So we have lots of different types of sources, like categories of sources, and I think we hear about books, scholarly articles quite a bit. 
Um, internet sources are definitely, um, you know, just think about blogs, government websites, stuff like that. And then uh, newspapers kind of don't get as much attention, as much love as I think they should. Um, newspapers qualify as what we would call a popular source. So we talk a lot about scholarly and popular sources with students here. Um, so popular sources are written by journalists. It's going to be very general interest stuff. You know, any of us could walk into um, a grocery store, pick up a copy of the New York Times, and roughly understand everything that's being said. Um, it's meant to be accessible. Um, they go through some fact checking, especially the larger papers. They might have several people on staff who just do fact checking. They go through an editor. Um, but it's not nearly as extensive as other sort of formal peer review processes that you see in scholarly articles. That doesn't mean that they're better or worse. Um, it's just that newspapers are published much more frequently, and so that process has to be a lot quicker. Um, and they will usually cite sources indirectly sort of in passing, or if they're online, obviously, they can be linked. Um, and then, yeah, down here, they can be um, published every day. Some places, uh, the New York Times com will publish in print, and also they'll update things hourly. There are some web-exclusive articles as well. So I just wanted to share a little bit. Um, some assignments you'll specifically be told you have to have a certain type of source. Um, so scholarly is obviously scholarly journals, um, and newspapers don't qualify as that, but they're still very helpful. So finding newspapers. Um, if you're not sure where to start, if you're just sort of interested in general newspaper research, um, I found an article from the Associated Press that talked about the top 10 newspapers in the U.S. in 2013. Um, this is print and online circulation. That means the number of people who are reading it in print and reading it online. Um, and the actual, if I click on this link, I think it gives me the numbers. It's just interesting to see. Wikipedia has some of its information as well, um, which has actually sort of led me here. Yeah, so you can see um, the Wall Street Journal by far is, is sort of leading the pack here. Um, I think most of us have probably heard of most of these papers. Um, I think that they are all relatively reliable. Um, and we'll talk about source reliability here in a second. But if you're not sure um, you know, what the big names in newspapers are, here are a couple that I would uh, recommend. Um, this chart is really helpful. It, it, it was created by a patent attorney named Vanessa Otero a few years ago. This was going around a lot during the election of 2016, and it's been updated several times, and I really like it. Um, it kind of explores media bias. So on the lower axis here, we have liberal to conservative, and of course we're talking uh, American media bias mostly here. Um, and then down here, um, it goes from least quality to highest quality. Um, and she's got a lot of rectangles that she's added, some you know notes and things. My um, general observation about this is that most of the large newspapers tend to fall into this sort of relatively mainstream minimal bias area. Um, and, and they tend to be you know higher than average quality. So New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, um, a couple others that are around. Also you'll see local newspapers on both sides of these. Um, so in terms of reliability, I think newspapers do a pretty good job. There are of course some like the New York Post um, that probably fall into some, some territory that you may not want to use in academic work. And just going back to this, <clears throat> just because these are popular, Newspapers, they are the most popular, does not necessarily mean that they're great. So, for instance, the New York Post goes down here. Um, it's, it's a little bit too far to one side, and it's got some quality issues. So I, I will say generally that newspapers are reliable, but approach it with caution, I think, is the best advice I can give. So these are some popular North Carolina newspapers. Um, if you've ever heard of these in Greensboro, we have the News Record. Um, Raleigh has the News and Observer. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of good uh, triangle area content. Also, the Asheville Citizen Times and the Charlotte Observer. These, of course, are not the only newspapers. I think they're just sort of the the bigger names. Um, a couple databases that I'll recommend. I'm actually going to skip this for now because I think getting into a demo of them will be more helpful. Um, so 
this link, which um, Sam, if you could drop this in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, it's just uncg.libguides.com slash newspapers. And this is what we call a libguide. Um, they're created for a variety of subjects and courses, and uh, we actually have one dedicated to newspapers, um, which I find really helpful. So I'm going to show you a couple of features that I think are interesting, and then we can kind of uh, go from there if there are any questions. So if you're on the main page, Newspaper Finding Aids, and you scroll down into the second box, you're going to see something that says Newspaper Map. I've been playing with this a little bit today, and I just think it's kind of a cool thing. Um, it's not actually linking you to the text of these papers, but it's showing you uh, sort of newspapers, I'm trying to get the map zoomed fairly, uh, newspapers around the world. So if, for instance, you were doing a project on um, I don't know, Venezuela, and you wanted to see some Venezuelan newspapers specifically, you could go here to the map and actually click on this, and it would tell you the name, where it's published, and the primary language that it is published in. Um, and you shouldn't feel discouraged if it's a language that you don't speak, because very often you can find translations of articles or uh, databases. Sometimes, even if it's not already translated, we'll, we'll do a rough translation for you. And there's always Google Translate. so. Um, I don't fully endorse that, but I think it could be helpful in some cases. So um, it's kind of a neat feature. It also shows you papers with larger circulation um, are, of course, going to have the bigger dots. Uh, you can also limit by language. So if I were interested in, oh, it's up here, filter by language, English, it's going to show me papers around the world in English. And I believe that some of these are in multiple colors because they publish in multiple languages. So that would be my guess. Um, or maybe it's, yeah, I think that's probably the most likely explanation. Yeah, multiple languages here. So I just think that's a fun tool if you're looking for a specific region, specific area. Um, I also want to show museum. Uh, you may have been to the museum. It's in Washington, D.C. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, it is not a uh, Smithsonian affiliated, so unfortunately it's not free, but it really is worth a visit. I really love it. This is their website, um, and they have lots of features, but I like, if you go down on the left side, you'll see today's front pages, and then I'm going to click on the date, and it will show me um, eight, they have 856 front pages from around the world. So we start sort of here in Alabama, and then, you know, I just poked through a few of them. And I was talking earlier about the placement of certain articles on um, on front pages of newspapers and how that can kind of give you a clue as to what's sort of most important uh, to that community at that time. So we may see, my guess today would be that um, we would see a lot of newspapers talking about the, uh, the murder of the journalist that's just happened. Um, or the suspected murder of the journalist. I'm not sure where we are on that, but potentially you would see a lot of those. You can also view it as a map. Um, and I believe they cover more than just the United States. We could probably we try Europe. It's going to show me that. And you can mouse over it and see. It's not the most uh, advanced mapping software ever, but if I were interested in it, here it is. I click on it, and it gives me a larger view. This is from Estonia. Okay, this looks sort of tabloidy, but uh, you know, it's it's just an interesting tool. It's like the other map that I showed. Um, if you are just curious to see what's happening around the world and what's being prioritized, um, let's go back to the guide. And the next one I want to show you is called Newspaper Source Plus. This is a little different. This is a database uh, that is owned by a company called EBSCO that we subscribe to. And here's where you're going to search uh, for if you were looking for articles about a specific topic and not necessarily geographically. So I'm going to search for plastic straws. Oops, it added a word for me. You'll see as I'm typing in, by the way, it's giving me suggestions. Um, and you should feel free to use those. Um, I'm going to do plastic straws and pollution. And what that's telling the database is I want you to search for the phrase plastic straws and the word pollution. Sometimes as a precaution I will put these in quotation marks so that it's sure to search it as a phrase. Although I think most databases now are advanced enough to pick that up on their own. 
I get 103 results. Um, I'm going to recommend a couple filters here. So on the left side, you're going to see under limit to, it says full text. If you click on that, it's only going to show you things that we have online access to. Um, and you shouldn't feel super limited by that because you can always request it through our interlibrary loan system. Um, but if you're looking for something quickly, that's one way to deal with it. You can see lots of different types of sources, newspapers, U.S. newspapers, news wires, news transcripts. Um, so, you know, you could, you could play around with that. I'm also going to click on the title of an article. And here we have some good data um, where it came from, the abstract, which is you know a summary <clears throat> of what the article is about, some subject terms. So if you were doing a project on marine pollution, these might be some good terms for you to try to search if you were struggling for information. And then over here on the left, we have the actual PDF of the article. Okay. I don't know anything about this particular publication, the scanner, um, so I would suggest Googling it, kind of try to get a sense for who they are and, um, you know, credibility, things like that. But that's a very sort of basic search here. You can also see uh, some of these have HTML full text, which just means that um, this is the entire article right here. Uh, I don't know that you can download it as a PDF from this particular database, but you could certainly um, print it. And there are some Chrome extensions that will allow you to convert things to PDFs. Anyway, um, so I'm going to move on and show you just a few more. Um, the, we have, I believe, two databases uh, related to the New York Times. So we have regular New York Times, just sort of their, um, uh, their current papers from, I think, maybe the 80s to the present. I could be wrong about that, but a popular one is New York Times Historical, which covers um, from 1851. So if you were interested in sort of older New York Times articles, you could take a look at this. So I'm going to try Civil War in Lincoln. By the way, there are filters down here you can mess with. I just sort of like to search this way first and see what comes up. So again, I'm going to click on Limit to Full Text. And I'm going to limit to like maybe from 1850 to 1879 just because I'm curious. And if you click on the title of the article here, this is actually a PDF of that, uh, that article from that newspaper in uh, March of 1861, and it has been digitized. So if you are interested in historical newspapers, there is certainly no shortage of them out there. Uh, a lot of people have worked really hard over the years to digitize these things and make them accessible uh, to lots of folks. So I think that that's a really valuable, um, a really valuable tool. And it works more or less in the same way that the other database did. You can limit, play around with the filters if that's what you're interested in. Okay. Let's go back to our guide. Um, two more, and then I'll take some questions. So again, under historical newspaper databases, I'm going to click on accessible archives. I was sort of messing around with this one for the first time today, and I was uh, just sort of interested in it. So you could click on different collections that they have. Um, some of them are by publication title. Some of them are just sort of uh, general, thinking about African-American newspapers as a collection, um, or there is women's suffrage, things like that. So it's not the most uh, extensive database, but the collections it does have, I think it does a good job of providing access. So I'm going to click on African American newspapers and then continue. And then you enter your search here. Uh, I'm a, I tried abolition earlier, and I search. And uh, lots of results here. Again, some filters. Um, I just sort of clicked on one, and you can see the actual text of the article is here because when you look at images <coughs> of newspapers that have been digitized, um, the typeface is very small, um, and there's lots of things that have sort of been crammed onto a page, or you may have spots like this. Um, so a lot of databases will just provide you with sort of the text that's been pulled out. But it is somewhere on this page. 
And then one more. I could just hit the back button, but anyway. One more that's interesting to folks who are interested in local history, Greensboro Historical Newspapers. Um, this is actually hosted through our digital collections website here at UNCG um, and triadhistory.org. Um, and they have lots of different collections here. Greensboro Historical Newspapers is right here. And you can browse by title several newspapers uh, historically that have existed in Greensboro. So if I tried the Greensboro Patriot, it's going to show me lots of things here. It's under format, source, subject. Um, it's maybe not the most uh, user-friendly sort of interface, but I think that there is some great content here. Um, and the folks in our digital uh, collections department have really done a lot of amazing work getting these things digitized and available, and, and the interfaces only continue to improve. So this is from 1869, Greensboro Patriot. And I could sort of check this out. So that's something interesting. Um, just a couple more points to make here about newspapers. Uh, we have newspapers in print, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you can come in and read, you know, probably the last, I would say, two weeks worth of the New York Times, things like that. Also lots of current magazines. Um, a lot of newspaper articles will also show up in our catalog. This way, I know this image is kind of hard to see, um, microfiche or microfilm, um, and those are certainly available for you to use. We actually have special machines here that will allow you to uh, look at these uh, look at these films and, and uh, save images and things like that. It can be a little daunting at first, but we're always happy to show you how to use those machines as well. Um, I also just wanted to point out our Special Collections and University Archives here. Um, I believe in some of their collections you can find newspaper articles related to specific uh, specific concepts and topics. And the, their staff is always very happy to help. If you go to About Us, you can see their contact information as well as several research guides that they have put together here. Um, I'll put that in the chat. So that is their, um, oops, I think I sent that to you privately, Sam, if you would share that, sorry. Um, this is their guide, and I think you can find some really neat things here. So, not just newspapers, but lots of other uh, really valuable resources. So, are there questions? That was a lot of information in not a lot of time, so I want to make sure that if there's anything I can address, I do. Okay. Well, I'm going to put up my contact information. Uh, again, my name and email address are there. If you have any questions at any time, I'm always happy to help you. Anybody uh, in our department or in our library would be certainly glad to help with finding, understanding, accessing newspapers anytime. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Timothy, if you think of any questions, I know uh, you don't have a mic, so you're welcome to put them in the chat. Um, so this webinar will be archived um, here on that um, link I just threw in the chat. Um, and note that we do have another one coming up in November on SAGE research methods. Um, so that's one of our databases that has a lot of resources about research methods. So, uh, you know, different types of research um, in different types of forms too. You know, ebooks, streaming films, uh, of faculty talking about research and more. So. That should be a good one. Mm -hmm. um, then the one in December is researching with digital archives. I mentioned that because um, Rachel mentioned SCUA. So um, an archivist, two archivists, well, our archivist, instruction and outreach archivist Kathleen Smith and David Gwynn, our digital projects coordinator, are going to talk about researching with digital archives, which does touch upon some of the stuff that Rachel mentioned today. So um, yeah, that's it. So, um, Timothy, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to email um, Rachel um, as a follow-up or anyone else, um, your liaison librarian. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you for anything coming. Else, Rachel? I don't think so. Okay. Timothy Thanks. says thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And we'll see you guys soon. Have a great day. Right. Bye. Bye.